welcome to a Smurd P video and today we are looking at Boom Studio Something is Killing the Children Issue 25 Congratulations and I've got to say I don't think throughout 25 issues I have ever once been bored off what is being delivered It is just um, and it's hard to say that in this day and age because sometimes I can read a comic and it's amazing. And then the next issue, I'm like, yeah, what on earth was that? So this has not been boring. 25 issues, well deserved. It's a brilliant, brilliant run. And if you haven't ever read something is killing the children, I recommend it. They've, um, I think they've just re-released the hardback of volume one, which is issues one to 15. I feel like there's some sort of annual in there. Pick it up, pick up a couple of trade paperbacks. You're up to speed. 25 issues. Now, from what I understand after this issue, they usually have a little break after an arc. That seems to be the norm with uh, Boom Studios. So, a bit disappointing in that. So, you got James Tinian the fourth. I think I've pronounced that right. I probably haven't. Who is just um, uh, an amazing writer. And then you got Werver Del Aldera. And once again, I, I probably said that wrong, so I do apologize. I like saying names wrong. These two together are absolute stuff. You've got perfect writing, and then you've got Werther that picks out what's being written, and he delivers the, the image that James must envision in his head when he's telling the story. So we begin with... I've forgotten her name. Evil guy, evil lady, sorry, not guy, she's not a guy, she's a lady. Is she a lady though? Probably not. Um, she is quizzing about when, I've forgotten who, who this person's name is, well I'm sorry. She is um, trying to decipher, etc. When she was picked up, did she know Erica? Which she sort of says no, etc. And she says, do you know Aaron? And then she says, well, you've got his uh, mask in package, in, in your pocket, etc. A bloody mask, which she takes out. And she said, yeah, maybe I did. And she says, are you happy with being a white mask? So she's interrogating her. Um, and she says she's fine with it. And but she says it must be nice to be part of a pack, because that's what the, the white masks are. They um, hunt in packs these demons rather than working alone or in a very tiny unit etc because the world's dangerous it's dangerous with these monsters etc and she says you know we like Celia she's very clever uh, and she talks to her Dolly <laughs> about that and um, it's nice that you're keeping an eye on us for us and then she says how long do we get there a few hours so meanwhile, Gabby is talking to Octopus about monsters. And, sorry, let me get my camera correctly. And she is um, sort of trying to decipher, you know, why didn't you tell anyone about the monster, etc., you know. And she says, well, you know what, maybe I'm going mad, maybe I'm killing them, etc., you know. That's why I'm talking to an octopus, like a crazy person, she says, I know where they are. It's just finished eating. I can smell it. We can find it. And, you know, I guess the, the promise is we can kill it. There we go. So, an opening around being manipulated by Octopus. And, oh, goodness, I've forgotten what she's called. That's going to bug me. That's going to bug me. And I had it in my head a minute. Who that lady is. Terrible. I should write this stuff down. Then I'll perhaps say, right, that's that, that's that, that's that. Anyway, I've got all the names, including this chick. I remember Erica. How can you forget Erica? Most important character in this whole book. So she's talking about, uh, she's trying to get her to reach out to Gabby so that she can have a conversation because there is not a human on the loose. She's open and honest. There are monsters on the loose and... She's been kept alive. She saw her family killed, but she's kept alive, which means something. It means that we can find this monster. Meanwhile, so she, she so Erica almost asks if she can call her. So 
and funny enough, Gabby calls her and she says, you know what, I'm talking to an octopus and if I'm going crazy, well, I probably should tell somebody and, oh, we're going to go kill some monsters. So, yeah, that's, that's the most funniest line I've kind of heard. I guess from having some kind of psychotic break, I figured somebody should know about it. Brilliant. Just, just the, the lines are brilliant. So once Erica hears octopus, she knows what's going on. She tries to speak to Gabby and she says, Gabby, the octopus is going to get you killed. And she's like, oh, you're the lady with the eyes because she has great big eyes. Sorry, I almost skipped a little bit too soon there. So she says, I don't know you. I'm hanging up. And she goes, and b b before that, Erica says, are you a bad octopus? So she asks the octopus. He's like, yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> if the octopus is dangerous and honest, how can you blame the octopus? The octopus is doing what he's doing. He's a monster tr spirit trapped inside a teddy bear, for goodness sake. So then she says to this lady here, who I can't remember her name, that, we need to go to the nearest springs to where she can walk to because that is where she's going to be and that is where a monster is. And she said, and she, so she says, well, why should I go with you? I'm not going to take any all of this on face value. She says, look, can I come with me? And we find her, we pick her up. She's with an octopus and she's not dead. Or we don't. And you hear it on the news what has happened and forever regret that moment for the rest of your life and from then it's sort of like a no-brainer let me just um just my light slightly so the local kids break into the springs all the time and that uh, gabby is aware that perhaps there are some boards that she can get into so she gets in there quite quickly and then she sees the monster and she's like well there's some language there that i am not going to repeat because i'm being all professional today <laughs> And she asked the octopus, how do I kill it? Octopus going silent. The octopus has led her into a trap. Now it's game over. And this monster looks absolutely stunning. This is what I'm saying about the artwork. You know, it's just it just picks out everything that James is trying to say and deliver it in art form. You know, the horrors there, you know, creepy legs walking towards you. Octopus is falling down. What more could you ask for? It is the perfect ten of the horror story. And then we get Slaughter flies in. Um, and then this monster, well, I'm not going to tell you what I think that looks like. But, you know, use your imagination. So she tells the kid to get out of there. And, you know, I don't know how they came up with how this monster looks. I really don't. Um, it's... I've never seen anything like it. It's absolutely horrific and it's brilliant and it's scary and it's beautiful and it's amazing. So Erica is up against it. Every time she stabs it, it just makes the monster angrier. So Gabby decides that she is not going to run out. She runs back with a friend who just sees Erica being thrown around because Erica is not strong enough to stand up to this monster. You know, you, you, you're usually a pack when you go against this sort of monster. So, and then they talk about it. She says, you can't see it, but we can. And she says, she's going to bleed out. Grab my stuff, my octopus, my stuff, and let's get out. So they're in the car. And then they get a, they get a phone call. And it's, uh, she says, hi, big, big Gary. And then she says, apparently, stab it. she starts going into it. Stabbing it just makes it angry. Which why I got the angry bit a couple of minutes ago. And then she she hears a voice that she's not expecting. And she's uh she said it's rude for you not to pick up a good friend's call, so I'm glad you did. Especially somebody who um breaks every code that they've been trained and everything that they've been given to live up in the the little farm that he's in. Oh, and she's called Cutter. We got there in the end. Cutter is her name. I completely forgot about. So Gary horrifically is tied up there. Badly, badly breeding. She's beating up his beautiful dogs. And um, then she says, "Oh, you sound hurt. Make sure you save some for me." It's 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 beautiful dialogue between Cutter trying to play the games with Erica, wind her up, etc. 
and she says, I wanted to know that you're, I'm coming for you. Um, after I've got a hold of somebody who's been helping you from the house of slaughter. He says, what did you do to Big Gary? She said, oh, he's sitting right in front of me. You can talk to him. I'll put you on speaker. And then he says, hey, kid. And then he says, my time's up. But yours doesn't have to be. Run. Get out of there. Don't protect the kid. Go. But Cutter knows that is not going to happen. She's already figured out Erica and the way Erica is. And Erica is a hero. That's why she is not going to run away from Mexico, which Cutter knows she is not going to run away. And she says, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to sort you out after your little tap, tap, tantrum, etc. Blah, 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 blah. And then, she, and then you know, Erica's realizing what's what's about to happen. And um, I'm not going to lie, this, this, bit, this bit got me. Got me good. Um, she says, Gary, and he says, you don't have to apologize for anything. Just promise me you will live. You will run and you will never stop running till you can't run no more. She said, and he says, you can't stop a duplicit type. I cannot say that. Um, <laughs> just get out. You're going to die. And, she, and then this is the bit that really got me where she says, I love you, Gary. You know, um, and let's be honest. Who else would Erica love? You know, he's been, and that's this relationship. He became like a father to her. <sighs> Wow. Moments. Um, then it's over with. He's gone. And then she says, we're going to have some fun soon. Ta-da for now. Wow. What an issue. What an end. Erica has been defeated emotionally. Not physically, emotionally she is now defeated. <sighs> What an ending. What an issue. It was perfect. Um, for me, I, I was thinking when I, when I read this, um, I thought, how are they going to have this big showdown? We, we've not even... It's, that's been building up for the last few issues. And I'm glad that it didn't happen in this issue. This was better because of the way it was delivered. Absolutely perfect. Um, also, to add credit to... Uh, Magoo on the colors and letters by Andworld Design. Um, it doesn't say who in Andworld Design. Um, unless that is Andwell's company, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not going to look it up either. But James, wherever, absolute perfection as always. And um, I'm not sure when something is killing the children is going to return. But for me, absolute stunning issue. Amazing work. And I am very excited for whenever the next issue comes out. I uh, hope it is a month from now. Anyway, take care of yourself. Subscribe to my channel if you like my channel. Um, thank you to those that already subscribe and watch my videos. Make sure you look after yourself. Very important these days. And as always, embrace the geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.